This is Twit. Sam Abul Samet is a principal researcher at Guidehouse Insights. He hosts the wonderful uh, podcast all about automotive technology called Wheel Bearings. It's a good name at wheelbearings.media. He's also my car guy. We talk to Sam every month on the show. Hi, Sam. Hello, Sam. Hello, Hello gentlemen. How are you today? I see the Northern Lights. So were you able to see them in Ypsilanti? Uh, yeah, I I actually drove about uh, twenty minutes out of town to a very yeah. dark place no to light a place called a place called Pickerel Lake, uh, which is a place that we love to go in the uh, in the summertime. Um, take the dogs out there and uh, go paddle boarding. And Daisy loves to ride around on my paddleboard on Pickerel Lake. So that this is a shot I took on uh, Friday oh, night. Gorgeous. Of, uh, of the Northern Lights over Pickerel Lake. I Very never cool. thought I would see the Northern Lights. I and I still won't. I haven't seen them. <laughs> I haven't seen them in many them. years. <laughs> I was. Uh, I mean, you know, I know a lot of a lot of my friends in the Bay Area did see them. Uh, yes, I saw uh, Reddit's full of outside. Reddit's yeah. full of photos from the Bay Area, even from Petaluma yeah. and uh, Santa Rosa uh, of the not lights. So it, it just I could I went out. I see. I can't tell if that's Northern Lights or just a pretty sky. <laughs> Well, when it's you know eleven o'clock at night, you know that's that's yeah, usually like a sign that. of northern yeah. lights. Yeah. And, they, and they're not mo are they moving or no? Oh yeah, yeah. They move. You can okay. yeah, it's like waves in the sky, uh, like sheets of nice. light. It's it's pretty wild to see. It's, and when you the further north you go, the more it looks like that. I was fortunate enough in the nineteen nineties to spend gorgeous. quite a few winters in um, in northern Sweden uh, doing cold weather development on on uh, wow. traction control and ABS systems. And you know, we were about um, you know, fifty miles from the Arctic Circle. And so there, you know, you would see them most nights. You you know, you could go outside and you'd just see these sheets of green light shimmering in the sky. It Very was cool. pretty wild. Yeah. So Sam, I gotta ask you. Yeah. What the hell's going on at Tesla? Uh, Elon Musk is completely insane. Uh, I mean, that's as simple as that. Yeah. He is now he, fired. He, he is he is a petty and spiteful man that um, you know just does whatever whim comes into his brain. So there's no logical explanation for firing 500 people, the entire supercharger team, the crown jewel, by the way, of the Tesla automotive network, because. Everybody knows people don't want to buy an electric vehicle unless it's easy to charge it. And they and Elon knew that from the beginning and built this incredible supercharger network. And then grasping defeat from the jaws of victory, <laughs> every car company says, okay, fine, Elon, you win. We're going to use your next charging solution. And Elon starts to make money because cars are starting to use a supercharger network. And then he gets mad at the woman running it and fires the whole team. Is that an accurate description but that is that is that is my understanding uh, uh you know when they announced you know the, that they were going to lay off more than 10 percent of their global staff uh about three weeks ago uh the head of the supercharger team uh whose name escapes me right now or actually she was in charge of all charging so superchargers and destination chargers pushed back on elon said this is you know we need we need more staff we, we can't fi we can't fire as many people as you want me to and so he said okay you're fired and then he proceeded to fire the entire team uh, instead of just firing a just portion. Just to prove of the team. that he was right. Tanucci is her name, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, just to prove yeah, that he just, was right. Well, to prove that he's the boss and what he says, you know, what what he's what he tells people to do is what they must do. And if you don't like it, tough, you're out of here. But he didn't stop there, did he? Because he's laying off other teams too. Oh yeah, I mean, he, he apparently laid off uh, the entire. Uh, new product team. Um, they aren't designing and, any more new cars. Uh, it depends on which which hour of the day you ask him. <laughs> you know, uh, at one point in the day, uh, you know, they've canceled the the uh, the planned low cost twenty five thousand dollar EV. Uh, but then on their earnings call uh, last week, he said. That yeah, we'll be introducing a lower cost vehicle early in 2025, uh, but it's based on our current products, um, you know, which probably means it's just a further decontented Model Three or Model Y uh, that'll you know maybe they can sell for thirty thousand dollars or at least at least claim that they're going to offer a thirty thousand dollar version, but never actually sell one at that price point. And incidentally, you may say, well, this doesn't affect me. I'm never going to buy a Tesla. Who cares? 
But we have said the U.S. government and taxpayers have subsidized this company from day one. Um, I, I'm just it's uh, it's stunning. Um, the you know, arrogance for, for, and for the stupidity of this man is seems to have. Oh, and by the way. They decided to pay him fifty billion dollars. through? Well, n not not exactly. The board wants to. Well, he told the board, "You must pay me fifty billion dollars." And since the board is made up of just his friends and, and his brother, um, that have never provided any real corporate governance in that company, um, you know, they said, "Okay, fine." And but you know, it has to be approved by shareholders. So the same pay package that they. Put out in 2018 that was struck down by a judge earlier this year, voided by a judge, uh, will now be going up for a shareholder vote and again vote, next yes. month. Yeah, um, I'm not? less convinced of that oh, okay. this time. All right, uh, you know, it, it may not it may not pass this time because you know people's attitudes towards Musk are very different today. I don't think he's worth in 2018. what we thought he was worth. <laughs> That was no. why they paid him so much. Well, uh, Rich and, Otto, you know, especially who was, since he's a especially since he's a part time CEO, right? You right. Know, you know, why why would why would you make a part timer, you know, who's also got half a dozen other companies that he is either CEO or if, a de facto CEO of, uh, you know, why would you pay him that much money? Rebecca Tanucci gone, mm -hmm. HR executive Ali Arabalo gone. Public policy executive Rohan Patel gone. These are all recent quit people quitting. Drew Baglino, former senior vice president of powertrain and energy engineering. But the one that's really kind of setting the world on fire, this is from Futurism, uh, is a Rich Otto, who nicely named OTTO, though, not Very UTO. Good. He's the head of product launches. He left after seven years and wrote a scathing post he's since deleted on LinkedIn. Oh, why did he delete it? Well, we got it. It's okay. Futurism. Made a copy. It's a company I love, he wrote, and it has given me so much, but it has also taken its pound of flesh. Great companies are made up of equal parts, great people and great products, and the latter are only possible when its people are thriving. The recent layoffs are rocking the company, and its morale have thrown out this harmony out of balance. It's hard to see the long game. It's time. It was time for him to make a change. So he's one of many executives leaving the sinking ship. The real question is, at this point, would you buy a Tesla? No, I, I mean, personally, Seems like I it's a risky proposition. Uh, well, I mean, Tesla's Tesla's not going to go out of business anytime soon. You know, we're you know, we're not talking about Fisker here. You know, Fisker is going to be bankrupt momentarily, you know, um, you know, if, if not, you know, probably within the next month, uh, they will declare bankruptcy. And it's unlikely that anyone will step up to, to buy them or save them, um, you know, and. You know, there are there are other uh, EV startups that are in equally precarious positions. Um, so Tesla has a lot of cash in the bank. They are still profitable. Yes, their sales are down. Their revenues are, are down and their profits are but down. So are all EV sales, right? I mean, this, there's a there is. Kind uh, no, of a, not everybody. No. All right. No. It feels like there's uh, a crisis in electric vehicles in the U.S. Uh, I, I think the crisis is overblown. Um, okay. You know, the, the rate of growth has declined. Um, you know, in large part because, you know, prices were still too high. People were concerned about the charging networks and, you know, interest rates are high and, you know, affordability is a problem. That's true. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, there are quite a few manufacturers whose EV sales are up. Ford's EV sales were up significantly in the first I see uh, Mach-E's everywhere um, now. Everywhere. Yeah. Very popular. And, you know, Hyundai Motor Group, you know, Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis, their sales are doing great. BMW is doing great. Um, you know, so there are a bunch of manufacturers who are doing quite well with their EVs. Uh, you know, so Tesla just, you know, I mean, they, Tesla still sells more EVs than, than anybody. Um, they're just not selling as many as they were. Uh, and they are in no imminent danger of going bankrupt. Uh, so, I mean, if you, if you really feel like you want a Tesla and, you know, you can, you don't mind giving your money to somebody as scummy as Elon Musk, then, you know, you're fine. You know, they're to the, to the degree that Tesla has ever provided particularly good customer support, they will probably continue to do so. Um, <laughs> You've you know, never and, been a Tesla fan. I know. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I have, I have, I have been a fan of what Tesla has done to promote EVs as a viable consumer product that, you know, 
are are a good solution for a lot of people. Um, you know, to to prove that you know, that, I mean, they have done more to prove that you know EVs are more than glorified golf carts than anybody. Um, they've also done an amazing job, you know, building out an EV charging infrastructure better than anybody else. They've done a vastly better job at that than Volkswagen did with Electrify America That's true. or That's EVgo really true. or anybody else. That's why it's stunning that they but, would fire that team. Yeah, I don't get that. Yeah, I mean, but, that's but, a success. But the, blows my yeah. mind. It just and shows it, you, know, you, my, you could be a success my, and fail in this. Yeah. I mean, my, my issue is with the way, you know, Elon treats his, his employees. Um, you know, I also have an issue with his uh, political leanings in the last few years. Um, and, and also, uh, you know, my biggest issue has always been their approach to automated driving, which I think has been reckless and irresponsible. Although I and heard a rumor right, that he's going to have to put LIDAR in now that he's like, uh, well, he, he doesn't like LIDAR. That's why he's, his FSD yeah, hasn't done so it, well, I think. It's it's on yeah I mean that's that's a big part of why FSD doesn't will never really work as as well as they've claimed. Right. Um, you know, the in the only. first quarter, Tesla was the biggest customer of Luminar, uh, a lidar company. Oh, interesting. Uh, they bought they bought two million dollars worth of lidar sensors, which works out you know at about a thousand dollars a pop for those iris sensors. Uh, works out to about two thousand sensors. That's not a lot. You know, in yeah. in the in the past. Um, you know, I mean, Tesla has been, you know, from time to time has buy, been buying Luminar LiDAR sensors, you know, in small batches from time to time that they use for what's known as ground truth testing. So even if you're doing a camera only system, you know, you, um, you know, for testing purposes, what you want to have is, is another verifiable uh, method of measuring the accuracy of your, uh, Im you know, your image detection algorithms. Um, and so they, they call that ground truth, you know, so to something, an active sensor that can actually measure everything, which cameras cannot do. Uh, and so they have, they have not, they've, they've acknowledged that they've used that, you know, he, Elon now claims that they no longer need to do that. So it's not clear why they're buying these sensors. Uh, but we'll, we'll see, um, you know, in the, in the coming months, my guess is that they're, what they may be considering, you know, is using it for this robo taxi that they're supposed to uh, unveil in August, uh, which, you know, will be a, a dedicated purpose built robo taxi. Um, but, you know, we'll. I didn't want to hijack your piece with this Elon thing. I just thought I'd ask you. No, <laughs> no it's fine. Because I, it just, it stuns me. Yeah. This, this uh, I mean, the cyber truck was a perfect example of an executive leading his company down the rosy path to failure. Now they did get a boost because Biden, the Biden administration says they're going to put a hundred percent tariff on Chinese EVs. That's a big boost for That's, American EV makers, right? Well, they, they haven't officially said that. That is what's oh. uh, reported to be coming. Oh, I thought uh, that was supposed to be an announcement. No, there's reports that they're going to uh, announce that on Tuesday. Um, and so we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see how that plays out. But that would be good for American EV manufacturers, I think. Yeah, uh, potentially. They also um, they already you know, have these depending, subsidies. Depending on how right? they, you know. Yeah, well, depending on how they, you know, how it plays out. You know, I mean, if you look at the history of the auto industry over the last 40, 50 years, you know, back in the late nineteen seventies, early nineteen eighties, there was a, a lot of moves towards protectionism against Japanese manufacturers. Yeah, that was a mistake. Um, right? And yeah. well, no, uh, well, I mean, the the result was that. Honda opened a factory in Ohio. Right. Toyota Good. opened factories in Kentucky. Yep. Um, you know, and and now you know all of those manufacturers build the uh, you know as seventy five to eighty percent of the cars that they sell in North America yeah, are built true. here. Yeah. And and in fact, um, Toyotas you know Toyota Camrys built in Kentucky uh, have more U.S. domestic content than any of the quote unquote domestic brands you know for General Motors or Stellantis. So. You know, it's, I learned you know, it wasn't something it new every time you're on. Bad. I appreciate that. You know? <laughs> so, you know, we'll see, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, if the Chinese brands want to do business in the U S and depending on how this, how these uh, tariffs are structured, um, you know, we'll probably see them, you know, building factories in the U S Mexico and, and perhaps even Canada uh, to build vehicles in North America for sale here. Do we want Chinese EVs? Are they good? Um, the ones I've driven are really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they, you know, one of the things to keep in mind, you know, there's, there's a, 
you know, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, some of the Chinese EVs that are available at really low prices in China. Um, you know, cars like the BYD Seagull, which, you know, have, you know, there's a lot of good things about those cars. But um, right now, those cars probably do not meet uh, U.S. crash safety standards uh, as they're built today. Uh, so they would have to be modified to meet those. Um, and also, you know, a lot of the low cost Chinese EVs tend to have much shorter ranges. Mm -hmm. uh, they have some and part of the reason why they're lower cost is they use, you know, smaller, smaller battery batteries. capacities. Yeah. And so they typically don't have, you know, have a range of, you know, maybe 100 to 120 miles at most, which what we've seen so far from U.S. consumers is they're not particularly interested in EVs uh, with such a short range. You know, they sell in very limited numbers. Uh, and I think until we have a lot more public charging infrastructure available everywhere that is reliable, uh, it's unlikely that you'll get Amer many American consumers to actually buy such short range EVs. So that means that they're going to have to offer EVs with longer ranges, which they do make. Uh, you know, and I've, I've driven a number of them. You know, the, the Zeker 01, uh, is a fantastic car. Um, the, you know, the, the, um, Xiaopeng P7, um, the, uh, you know, and, and there's, and there's others as well that are really good cars. Um, and, you know, with some modifications to meet U.S. crash safety standards, uh, they could probably do quite well here. They, you know, they're not going to be $13,000 cars. But uh, they, you know, they could probably be very competitive. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. Hope you enjoyed this little snippet from Ask the Tech Guys. Of course, you can get the full show for free. Subscribe in your favorite podcast client uh, or visit our website, twit.tv slash ATG. You'll also find links right below this window right here. Hey.